a good Wednesday morning to all of you. How's everyone out there doing? I see a few people still coming into the room, so while they're settling in, go ahead and use that chat box to let me know that you're there and how things are doing. It feels kind of odd just to be staring at myself in the webcam, and so I'd love to hear from some of you. In Kansas, I'm feeling quite appreciative of all of you. The positive comments you're sending our way about this session is it's very encouraging to us. Let's see, Chuck, we've got people checking in. Let's see, we have yeah. Happy Wednesday. Yeah. We Hi, Melissa. Hi, Emma. Vega. Vega. Nice to Vega. have you back again. <laughs> As I was saying, the comments you're sending are really encouraging to us, and the registrations are growing every single day. We began the week with 108 of you, and today we have 139 right before I started this session up. So welcome to all of you who may be joining us for the first time. Let's take a look at today's agenda um, this morning. Matthew's going to be talking about a topic of your choice, how to create and edit student manager email templates. Um, this afternoon at noon Central Time, this is your opportunity to ask questions of ACEWARE staff members. We'll have Chuck and Joe and Stein with us. We've had a few questions submitted already. Thank you very much. And this is a time to get some of your pressing questions answered. Uh, Chuck likes to refer to this as uh, stump the chump, so make those questions for him. Um, if you have questions, you can be sure others do too. So bring those to our attention. At 1.30, we have Maxie joining us from the University of Texas at El Paso. They've got exciting things going on there, and she's going to share how they're using um, coding, coding for their success. Let's see. And then this afternoon, we're going to close up with Lindsay. Another uh, highly requested topic was ACE Web email templates, and so that will be covered this afternoon. I will remind you all, since we have some new folks, that sessions are being recorded and they're posted to the conference site just as soon as Lindsay's able to help me out with that. And the participant list is also available on that same site. If you registered last night, I'm sorry I missed you, but we'll get that uh, posted this evening. Today is all about teams. Our giveaways will all be related to team um, <laughs> efforts. And the first thing we're going to have giveaway is the pizza party. So when you guys can all get back together again, we'll support that kind of welcome luncheon and get you all together. Later today, you want to sit in on every session today because one of the giveaways will be some team web training, and you want to be sure you're entered for that. Okay, I think I've covered all of our housekeeping notes. Can so we're I, gonna, I, Chuck, oh, you can, absolutely. Chuck here. I'd like to put in a shameless plug for that Stump the Chump session at noon, <laughs> at noon be, because if you sign in right at 12 noon, and I know Central Time, you're eating into lunch, but there is a uh, mystery new feature that we actually didn't cover on Monday morning, and uh, we'll take five minutes to show you that. It's going to be great, so sign back up at noon. So, all right, I'm 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 ready to be quiet. Be quiet. No, no problem. So today, Matthew, this morning, he's going to be talking about student manager email templates. 60% of you that responded to our conference survey on what topics you'd like to see had student manager email templates as your choice. And there's no one better to share that than our student manager programmer, Matthew. And I'm going to turn things over to him. And remember, while he's presenting, if you have any questions or comments, please um, get those to Matthew. And we, Matt, uh, Chuck is watching those, and he will get those questions to Matthew or respond to you directly. So Matthew, I've turned things over to you. I'm seeing your screen. I'm going to get out of your way, and it's all yours. Well, thank you, Sharon, and thank you, everybody, for uh, coming to this, and thank you for voting on this. I actually suggested this, and because I suggested it, it means that I had to come up with the actual session and present it. So thank you for voting on it. Um, 
So we're going to do some things here. This is the uh, session uh, description from the website. So I'm sure you've already seen it, but uh, uh, just wanted to show it up here again. A um, little bit about me. You can find out more about me just uh, checking things out here. Uh, today's agenda, we're going to cover what templates are. What do they do for you? Where can you find those templates? What uses can they can they be used for? Um, there are several parts to a template, so we're going to go over some of the details of that, and then actually go into the rules of of those different sections. What what you can and um, hopefully can avoid doing in those sections. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about functions. There are just way too many functions. We did a uh, pre-conference one year on, on functions and um, lots of learning, but we didn't cover not even half of the functions in Student Manager. So I'm just going to kind of show you where to find them in the help guide and, and, and let you go from there. But uh, uh, we will talk a little bit about variables, uh, the different variables that you can use. Um, on, especially with receipts, but uh, anyway, we'll get more into that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about HTML and CSS formatting, um, give you a little little idea on what can be done with that stuff, and again, what can't be done. All right, what are templates? the The idea behind a template is to avoid you retyping every single time. You are enrolled in this course and this course, and it meets at this time and this time, and blah, blah, blah. It is to allow you to code that stuff in and uh, let that stuff fly. So it's really meant to make your life easier. Um, and I have a feeling that the reason why you're here is you've found that in the short run, it doesn't make your life easier, that it's a little hard to uh, code these templates in. Um, yeah, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. So hopefully you can pick up a lot of tips in this session and then uh, be able to utilize the help guide and get you where you need to go with the templates uh, that you need. And then definitely reach out to your technician um, when you're stumped or reach out to me. Um, I can I can certainly look at a template and uh, pull out my hair until I finally realize that there's one quotation mark that's missing and, and tell you where it is. But um, anyway, uh, and then we'll talk about more about what what you can use templates for here in a minute. So location, this is out of the module catalog area. Um, Module catalog email templates, and it, the reason why it's out of the catalog area is because we're utilizing the catalog screen. Uh, one of the newer features that I've put in this year is to be able to, it just automatically launches the search screen. E underscore mail is the default uh, registration confirmation. So that's probably the one you're going to want to spend the most time with. Um, so I'm actually going to use this as my main examples, uh, using this with my examples today. So uh, let me go back to the show. Okay. One thing I love to do, rip off and replicate. Um, really, all you have to do when you come to a template, hit clone entry, and it copies this copies that template and you give it a brand new code. So if I want to call this e underscore mail conf and give it a new conference. So I'm going to use this for my conference courses. e underscore mail conf. That's the idea. Hey, I'm already three quarters of the way of what I want to do just by cloning the entry and, and going. So I'm going to save that right like what it is. Make sure you give it a unique code, because otherwise 
Institute Manager is going to scream at you and tell you to keep re-entering that code. But yeah, clone entry is going to save you some time. Okay, you can click Add and start with a blank slate. Not recommended, but you can. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you the rip off and replicate method because that's what I think everybody should be utilizing. Uses. So we have some templates in here in, in the base system, like E underscore mail, for receipts. Uh, some of the other ones, I'm just going to hit find real quick. Uh, con con confirm HTM. That's the HTML version of basically E underscore mail. Um, uh, let's see, some of the other, well, I think that's pretty much it with the base system. Uh, but we have other things. Um, uh, merge mail, you can do quite a bit with. And if you don't know merge mail, that's um, um, uh, yeah, you'll you'll want to look that up in in the help guide. Uh, we've actually got it to where the the templates can be pulled up from class mail and stuff, but it's mainly the way to do um, specialized emails. Like you're you're doing a a a special conference, you want the email to be a certain different way uh, to fit that conference. Uh, you can you can uh, modify the template or build a template just for that conference and 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 for that. You'll only use it one time, but when you're sending it to a hundred, two hundred, a thousand registrants, you're definitely not wanting to retype that over and over again. So. Uh, you can definitely do specialized things with it. We've got the uh, reminders area in Student Manager. Actually, that's one of the ways to pull up the Merge Mail screen is to do the uh, reminders. Um, and you could definitely do that from the class mail um, section as well. That's off of Quick Reports. Um, instructor Contracts. Actually, that's this contract one here. Um, special things like marketing, your your especially with upcoming courses. Um, um, and actually, I'll give an example later of like a follow up email. You're marketing the the next section coming up, um, but in general, hey, these are the upcoming courses that still have available seats. Um, we've got uh, functions that you can pull in to to show those so uh, yeah there's there's definitely marketing opportunities to do with templates and then uh, transcripts uh, being able to email a transcript although it seems like more and more people want that um, um, uh, you know kind of nice PDF document uh, which they can certainly now get off of the ace web but um, uh, you can also email as another Another option if they're just wanting, hey, what all courses have I taken? And you know they're maybe not as familiar if, with using Ace Web that they, uh, you can just email them a transcript, and we've got uh, you can definitely do that. Uh, so these are kind of newer stuff coming in, um, although the send quick being able to, here. I'm going to show. That. I keep. Talking about send email to class, so I'm just going to pull it up real quick. And what I'm talking about off of quick reports is send quick email to class, say all, yeah, close. And this drop down right here, you can pick the template you're wanting to use. So if I am sending a reminder, hit reminder. It automatically pulls in that template and and fills in that information uh, for you to be able to send to this course. Hey, this is coming up in well four months, but still, hey, this is coming up. All right, let me pull back up the uh, email templates and go back to that one I was starting with. 
Uh, there is the reminders option in the menu. That's actually the, under tools, um, somewhere in here, student reminders, and also student follow-ups. So you can send surveys to students. Uh, that's definitely been used. Uh, be able to uh, market the next course in a series. I've mentioned that before, but uh, definitely do all those options uh, from there. Um, and probably you guys have figured out other ways to utilize that follow-up, so uh, definitely kudos to you guys for doing that. Um, uh, email roster to instructor. This was recently moved into being a template, and this actually uses two specific ones, the ROS to teach regular and ROS to teach HTM, which has the HTML version of, of the same thing, and you can now be able to uh, modify those, uh, be able to send those out. Okay, the parts, and we can kind of see this better here. You've got the header, the body, and the footer on on an email template, and different different little bit different uh, coding rules with them. You notice I've got quotes. And, and some coding here in the body, but the header and the footer, just plain text. Uh, and I'm actually going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But just kind of realize that the header and the footer, they're just going to show up once per email. The body is going to get repeated uh, depending on how many times the information is in in a cursor. So on a receipt, if this is a group receipt with four or five courses, then the body is going to be repeated four or five times for each each course. All right. Rules. So for the most part, the header and the footer, just type. Put in what you need to do. Um, hi, 2020. Aceware Users Conference. You know, just keep typing. And same thing with the footer. You can encode on, on some of these, especially with the uh, merge mail, um, send quick email to class. You can encode the, uh, the header and footer. So if, especially... So I've got student name in the body. Well, I said this is going to show up multiple times. If I don't want it to show up multiple times, I'm going to want to encode the header. And in order to encode the header, I must put in quotes what I'm in, in, in um, anything that is static. So, and what I mean by static is it... I want it to print exactly that in that email. Well, it's not print, but you know, you know what I'm saying. And then plus, I'm going to rip off and replicate. Control X. Ah, too many deletes there. And I moved now the student name, and then their name is up into the header. And I'm going to show here in a minute some formatting things I can do with that. But anyway, moving it up into the header, now the body shows the course name and just the course information then, time, dates, um, fees, stuff. I'll talk more about some of this other stuff as we go, as we go through the, the show here. So now email roster to instructor, uh, those two templates, they only have a header. So you're encoding the header. Here, I'm going to bring that one up. So let's save that. Find Ross to teach. So you notice in here I have student list populates here in the body. So it's just the header that you're putting in. So that's going to be your course information uh, to the instructor. 
saying, hey, this is the course that we're talking about, then the body is going to be filled in from um, from the code of what needs the the actual student list. And then, if I remember right, you can then put a footer, close, you know, signing off or, or whatever you need to do um, with that. So, okay, so let's talk more about rules for the body. So you're building an expression for the email. That's the important part. And this is always going to be strings, text. So um, keep that in mind. And I'm going to talk more about conversion of stuff here in a little bit. But keep in mind, anytime you're trying to en encode, you've got to put quotes in the text string. And with Visual Fox Pro, there are actually three different types of quotes. You got the double quote, the single quote, and then you can have the square brackets surrounding a string. So I think if I go back to my conf email, um, actually this one doesn't have it, but instead of, or, ah, by the way, you can double click and it expands into full screen uh, if you're needing more room to see. But so instead of double quotes around dates, uh, I can put square brackets. That especially comes in handy if you have uh, dates and then I don't know. So for some reason, you need to put some quote. Um, hey. Yeah, all. Um, so, in this case, I'm needing to use a single, well, and it's an apostrophe, so I can't use a single quote in here, but I'm I'm wanting to put quotations around, hey, you all, uh, and that to show in, in my template. Um, so, I do need to have square brackets around everything, to tell Visual Fox Pro, hey, this is definitely a string literal. Don't um, don't change it. And actually, I could you can hit this preview email, and it does try to render that stuff. So, oh, by the way, before you hit preview email, hit save. Then when you hit it. Okay, so it tries to render it. Um, by the way, this is really handy if you're building an HTML uh, message. Um, so that definitely will render the HTML out. But um, yeah, so we're wanting to see this this message, the hey you all, uh, with the different quotes. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Most, of the, as you can see with with this template, I've really been making it with um, the double quote, and that is definitely fine. That's going to work ninety nine percent of the time. Uh, Matthew, just a quick note. One other case where you might need to use different uh, quotes is when you use a function that might be asking for a parameter that you have to pass. Right. as a string so that there may be another case where you have to watch your uh, uh you know cascading if you would um uh, quotation marks so all yeah. right yeah and html we have a couple is... questions if i if you don't sure. mind we'll we'll take a break and let people uh, brains cover uh Emma asked is there was there a special reason that we had underscore in the name of e underscore email for the receipt no uh, it no it just I don't. That's the naming was convention. The convention. It was, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was saying that maybe once upon a time we thought that's how we distinguish between emails and catalogs, but we no longer do that. Other question was, if a person has two email addresses on their name profile, will that cause problems when sending email out? Or what does it do when uh, any, a person has two emails in their email line? I believe 90 some percent of the time it is going to send to both. It's going to pull both into 
the the sender and send out. I think it, in AceWeb though, only the first email in the list gets emailed. Um, and so I, we'll I think that's that, the only uh, case. Lindsay, we'll let we'll let uh, we'll make sure that gets asked to Lindsay this afternoon. So there's your lead in, guys. You need to sign up for this afternoon's as well. So that's all <laughs> I can ask you. All right, thanks. Yep. Okay. So and I was just talking about HTML is another one of those, especially when you got links and you're using quotes and stuff around the links. Um, you'll need to do square brackets or, or single quotes around the outside of that because HTML needs to be put into quotes. So keep that in mind. All right. The main thing to realize is when you're encoding this, you are concatenating, that's the plus sign, you're concatenating strings together. So up here I've got student name plus a function, which actually pulls the username in. Um, so yeah, there's the concatenation there, and then I've got all sorts of concatenation down here and a bunch of other functions and, and whatnot. So um, you're putting strings together. Now another thing, you need to convert something to a string when it's a numeric, a date, or a logical. Uh, numeric, you can use either the string or the transform function. Uh, this template actually has a string function. Ah, keep doing that. Don't double click. Here's the string function, str. You, the uh, first parameter is the field that you're wanting to convert, how many total digits, and that's digits, whether it's a negative sign, a decimal point, or the uh, uh, actual decimals themselves, you need to have enough digits for that. And then the third parameter, set off by this extra comma, is the number of decimals. So really, if this course fee, well, you shouldn't have a negative course fee, but course fee, uh, really, you've only got four main digits, that decimal point, and then two more digits for the decimals when you have it set as 7, 2. Now, shorthand, transform does not need to know about the decimals and, and the number of digits. So I tend to to try to use transform anymore when converting um, um, numerics to a string uh, just just so I don't have to mess with those decimals. But uh, to each their own, definitely the E underscore mail, like we just saw, use the string. Dates uses this DTOC function, and DTOC is date to character. There's also a date to string, but date to character is what I use 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, so it for sure works in in most cases. Now you got to be careful if you've got null values for those of you that use uh, SQL Server. Um, DTOC will not work on a null value. So that has a little caveat to it. This template has a, ugh, I did it again, double double click, does not work. This one uses this edates variable, and I'm going to talk more about that but later. But um, um, there's also the nice date function. Um, actually, I've been promising to talk about where to find functions. So there let me just go. hit the help guide. <laughs> and uh, uh, under student manager topics, under report functions, and click in here, function descriptions. Here's the big old long list of functions. By the way, you could search. Um, somewhere in here is DTOC. 
nice date, uh, nice date, returns formatted dates. So this, you don't have to worry about the null thing. You just pass in nice date, cobeg date, or whatever other date field you're wanting to do. And plus, if you're wanting, you know, to show between two dates, begin date and end date, then uh, you can certainly pass in the second date to a uh, nice date, and it'll show um, nice formatted, and you can do different abbreviations and stuff like that. So this function is going to help you a lot. Um, um, I'll talk about that variable here after a minute, but um, definitely Matthew, be looking up. Uh, Matthew, can, sure. can, I'm just curious. Um, let's do an audience participation here, and ask. I'll ask folks, or you ask folks, how many of you have actually gone into the health guide to look up a function? So uh, raise your hand. Just just use that little hand on your uh, go to meeting, uh, go to webinar form. Oh, we've got a good uh, crowd. Twenty five percent. Yeah, we we've got twenty twenty five percent of the folks who actually have done that. So <clears throat> that's great. And hopefully the rest of you who might uh, be inter getting into this. Now you know where you can get to the source for this. So, all righty, Matthew, very good. Thank you. No problem. All right, on with the show. Um, another function, uh, especially handy with uh, logicals, the show TF function. Actually, let's just go to the help guide and show it from there. So if I scroll down, show TF is somewhere. There we go. Uh, by default, it returns um, uh, yes or no. Uh, so if you're, it's especially with your UDFs, your logical UDFs, uh, pass in that logical UDF and uh, be able to show um, yes or no. Uh, you can actually have it say true or false if you uh, pass a second parameter like uh, this example here. By the way, rip off and replicate, copy, and paste it directly into your template. You don't even have to do any other encoding other than make sure you put a plus sign. Catalog, email templates, email comp, plus show TF, and there's my logical. Although in this area, probably want registration user defined logical one or whichever logical you want to show. Um, oh, another thing with the help guide. So these field names that I keep showing in here, under screen layout is every single screen, uh, well, not every single, but quite, a, you know, the main screens in Student Manager. So if I'm wanting to look at the registration screen and pull up, you know, this t-shirt field, what is the actual code for it? Well, it's RG code. Or I can click on it and it tells me RG code, it tells me the length. Um, so it's definitely handy if you're looking at like the RG course fee and you're using the string function. Well, now you know it's eight digits long. So that helps and, you know, eight digits long or eight comma two to show the decimal points uh, would get you that conversion into a uh, string for that. So this is another handy thing when when dealing with email templates is to show this. Okay, back to the show. Okay, the caveat thing to avoid: 255 character limit. This is set by Visual Fox Pro. So not us. This is approximately 40 to 45 words with spaces. So you're, you know, that you can run out of space pretty quick. So every two to three sentences, you need to make sure that there is a break or a concatenation. Um, ah, come back here. So like up here, I've been encoding this. If I keep, you know, keep coming, go, 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 go. Well, eventually this is going to be too long. So I need to make sure 
put a break. Ah, concatenation, plus sign. So end one quote and start a new quote. And my recommendation is every two or three sentences get this broken up. Or if you are, you know, you've just put together one long humdinger of a sentence, break it up right after that sentence. I mean, if you've got a sentence with more than 45 words in it, you are probably also want to think about maybe putting a break right in the middle of your sentence. Remember, this is just encoding. So this is actually going to, to uh, come back together, and we're, we're going to see that if I do the preview email thing. This will come back together. Ah, hit save first. Hit save, then hit preview. I need to put a... I just need to code that button to put a, a space or put a, uh, put a save right when it fires so that you guys don't run into this. But anyway, uh, preview of the email. You can see that, that extra concatenation. Uh, definitely you can copy and paste into Notepad++ and see when you're hitting that 255 character limit. I think Word also shows character count as well. Um, anywhere, any program that shows you a, a character count, uh, utilize that to to show uh, when you're hitting that limit. So, cool. question. And that's that. Matthew, yeah. um, What what happens when you uh, go over 255 characters? Does the email itself fail, or does it not send it? I mean, it, what what? It gives you an error message. It'll, it does it'll say, yes, um, string too long to fit, I believe, is the error it will show. So when you're sending an email and you get string too long to fit, you know you've hit this limit. Very good. Well, Thank you. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's what we get quite a few calls about, so I wanted to make sure I mention this in this presentation. So, all right, character, carriage returns. So in a Word document, you're hitting the Enter key uh, to give you that, that new line. Um, in encoding the body, CRLF stands for Carriage Return Line Feed. And you can see this all over the place in here. CRLF here. Did it again. Here. There's two, there's another RLF there. Um, probably I would want, after my opening sentence, a CRLF before showing the student name. So I can definitely add that up here now that I'm encoding the header. Uh, so you can do that. There is a CR2LF, which gives you two lines, or you could type in CRLF plus CRLF, well, save you a few characters and we can do CR2LF. And you can see that uh, several places here in the body as well. Um, if I want this up here to be two lines after my opening paragraph, then show the student name uh, before going into the body, we c you can do that. In HTML, you don't get the luxury of CRLF. You've got to put in the break tags whenever you're doing that. All right, fields. This is this first sentence is pretty important. Only those fields that are native to the current area, which could be the cursor in a, you know like the cursor in a report, is are what's going to work. Um, even Lindsay, when she was testing uh, Monday, uh, she got an error message with one of her templates, and I was like, "Oh, well, you're using that's because the that template isn't going to work in this particular area because you've got it coded with fields that don't exist." So it was like, "Oh, well." And then she tested it a different way, and it worked fine, of course, because she used a template that worked in that area. So, um, um, yeah. Just kind of pay attention to that. Uh, that's why, let's see, this, 
did this one have add functions? No, it was that other template. So let me save, find, ROS to teach. You see a whole bunch of add CRSE elements. That's because this particular area that this runs out of doesn't have a lot of course uh, information in that area. So I made sure to encode when I came up with this default um, template, I made sure to, to encode the add CRSE function into it to, to pull that course information. And there's also like add loc and add loc2 and uh, you know, all sorts of add functions. But uh, on a receipt, you're, you're going to have quite a few course quite a few registration fields, uh, quite a few uh, name, I think name, pretty sure name, yeah, name, uh, registration user defined fields, and name user defined fields. Um, there's quite a few of those fields in, a, in the receipt area. Um, so you, you can, you've got quite a bit to play with with that. Uh, but definitely, if you get a variable does not exist error when you try to send this uh, uh, template, you know that you've uh, added a field that that doesn't work in this area. Um, come on. There it is. Okay. Definitely use the help guide. How many times have I said that in this, this session? In the help guide is... Uh, oh, student manager topics, report area, no, where is it? Report functions in under, under report functions. The next one down is reporting, and there's a report area guide. So if you're doing the mass email or um, mass receipt, or you could think of it a regular receipt, your receipts, these are the fields, not every single field from these areas, but these, you're, you're going to have a, a much higher likelihood of getting the fields from these tables uh, in a receipt. So keep keep that in mind. Do we? Yeah. Yeah, and it just depends on which report area um, uh, you're running out of, or which area you know you, you're doing things. Uh, it, it's just going to depend. So you'll have to look look at these different areas when uh, when you're thinking about where you want to run the the email from. Okay, functions. Again, yeah, I've already I kind of skipped to this uh, um, skipped to this earlier, but. Uh, um, but yeah, definitely use the help guide. Um, definitely the formatting functions, you can use those. There are other functions um, that are built for specific things. So like, um, oh, I'm trying to think, GT. Oh, let's look at Deadbeat. Deadbeat. Returns the balance due for all classes taken. So this this is definitely you know look at the reporting areas. You can see names and registrations. So if you're running a registration receipt, you should be able to use the deadbeat function uh, to pull this information in if you're wanting to show it on your email template. So be looking at that report areas on these different functions. Make sure it's going to be usable in, in that area. Um, special functions, just do it, just after, copy to XLS, things like that, you cannot use on templates. Um, it, yeah, they're just not built for it. So keep, keep that in mind too. Variables. And the receipt, particularly, is full of these. And I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but um, uh, if I pull back up my receipt, uh, notice I've got the e-dates function in here. 
Oh, I went back to E underscore mail instead of the one I was playing with. But anyway, E dates. If I look at that, displays course dates. That's your begin date and end date. Uh, it's got E due, E paid, and E PY message in here as well. So E due is the total due for the registration. E paid, total paid. Um, the message, next page here, message stating either thank you for your payment or balance due, depending on if they fully paid or if there's a balance. Um, so that's kind of handy. You don't have to figure out, okay, do they owe a balance or do they not? This uh, EPY message already figures that out and, and tells the student um, that, that information. So there's several other variables, pretty low, uh, to show information about the location, uh, that's, that comes in handy quite a bit. Um, what am I using on here? Am I using pretty loc? Yep, pretty loc is on on e underscore mail. So um, yeah, there's there's quite a few variables. These are all in the help guide, by the way, um, but also definitely in the the notes on um, you know Sharon put in the webinar here. Uh, you can download the, that information and see all those. So, okay, I was promising to talk about HTML. Um, kind of, yeah. You make sure you know HTML and CSS when when dealing with HTML emails. Um, but here are some of the things to keep in mind with the header. He, uh, actually, here, let's just pull up the uh, confirm htm. Header needs to start with HTML, and the footer needs to be ending with the slash HTML. That's what tells um, the email clients when the student receives it, you know, whatever email client they're using, Gmail, Outlook, whatever, it tells that client that this is an HTML message. And so then it's going to render it as HTML. Um, CSS, if you know, you've got the different styles. Actually, I don't think that's an actual CSS style. I think that's just with TD, the TD, which is the table, um, table element. And then, um, but yeah, you can put the style right in in line, uh, so be able to use the different CSS stuff with your things. Nine, I mean, a lot of times using just like things like strong and things like that to help bold. Here, I'm just going to hit preview email so we can see it. Um, so this this bolded up the labels here, and then it shows kind of in a nice line than these other uh, elements. So mainly, you, the reason you would want to use HTML and CSS is to pretty up your, your emails. Um, if you don't need to make it pretty, you don't need to do an HTML document. But um, uh, definitely make sure you've got opening and closing tags. I know on building websites, a lot of web browsers, they 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 kind of are loosey goosey with those. If there's not a closing tag, it kind of like oh yeah, there should be a closing tag here, so I'm just going to pretend there is, and lets it render fine. Outlook and other mail clients, not so much. If you're missing a closing tag, it just quits rendering. Uh, so definitely make sure you've got each tag closed. Uh, images and documents that aren't attachments need to be hosted on a web server. Uh, so definitely if you've got Ace Web, put them in the images folder or some other folder in the root or you know in WW root uh, so that you can link to those documents uh, when you're sending them, which 
depending on the the uh, spam filters on that person's email, if there's a lot of that stuff, it could get blocked. Especially images anymore, they just tend to just lock those down quite a bit when they think it's a spam message. And unfortunately, a lot of things coming uh, anymore just get marked as spam. It's it's Unless the user, your student, has said, I want to get emails from this person, um, you're, you're going to have a lot of emails go to spam. So kind of keep that in mind. Attachments anymore even uh, also end up flagging for spam unless it's a PDF attachment. PDF and I believe regular images as attachments uh, usually don't affect the spam score too much. But it's usually Word documents, especially if the Word document has the uh, Visual Basic script in it. That's going to get flagged. Uh, so keep that stuff in mind. Uh, also, some HTML tags just won't work on some clients. The float um, tag in Outlook doesn't work. Gmail will not use link or style. I don't know why, but that's one thing we've we've dis discovered. There's others that just do funky things and and it really is sometimes problematic to figure out, hey, why all of a sudden is there a uh carriage return in the middle of a word? I mean, it's like, uh, why? So yeah, you can get frustrated pretty quick when uh, dealing with HTML. Um, in addition to trying to encode your your emails, uh, I already mentioned the prettying up is the main advantage for using HTML. I think I've pretty well kind of relayed. A lot of times you might want to avoid HTML um, if you can't. Uh, definitely marketing emails, you're wanting them to be pretty. You want them to be ca eye-catching so that the uh, student will grab them. Unfortunately, they're going to end up in spam more often than not. But, you know, that's kind of the rule. You know, that's kind of the engagement or the, the disadvantage there. So with HTML, definitely utilize w3schools.com to, to be looking at Learning HTML on yourself, I use that all the time, especially in double checking a lot of the stuff. I'm not a CSS guru, especially with the CSS changing all the time. Um, so yeah, I've used W3 schools all the time, especially when do, dealing with that stuff. Uh, Aceware.com HTML email. Uh, there's actually a link from the tools, or not tools, help create HTML formatted emails. And this lets you put in your text and then be able to, well, there's instructions down here, be able to copy it out and, and put it into your email template. Um, this would this obviously does not work with any of the encoding elements. This would mainly be for for the you know the header and and, and footer type stuff um, you're wanting to put in that kind of stuff. But uh, this definitely is a useful tool to help you generate HTML for you. And then uh, the preview email button that I've been talking about especially with HTML, is going to help you uh, be able to see that stuff. And then hopefully realize what's broken if there is something broken. Okay, there it's 11.25, so I don't think I have a time for an example, but what questions are there? Is there somebody talking? I, I am talking now. 
uh, Chuck's getting back on audio. I think I hear I'm sorry. Talking. I had audio off. Uh, uh, Leslie had a question on the um, on their receipt, the email receipt. I think ePay message is set up by default to say make checks payable to and then the firm name or company name. But they say they don't want to have checks and then they want people to go online. So how would um, uh, if you would go to the template and if they say I don't want ePay message, how could they say uh, you know, uh, go online to your account and and make your payment. Just you know, kind of an on-the-fly edit here. Matthew, I think you're off audio. Can you come back on for it? Oh, yeah. There you are. <laughs> Sorry. Let me. Let me get to HTML because you're sending a link and um, uh, and it's the account status page let's see do I have where am I at well your 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 standard email yeah your standard email has the e underscore mail has epa message in it that's the default that most people use epay mail or yeah e underscore mail yeah right there right. the epay message so and so you're going to want to check for if they have a balance or not um so that kind of gets a little tricky um, um so i guess the, you can't do e do uh, uh question Matthew. But yeah. how about, how how about if you uh create another variable that would have and again, I think we can Ooh. work on on this. I uh, go ahead. You had a thought? No. Yeah, the variable that is, um, please log in and uh, to your account status page on Ace Web to to pay. Yeah, we can do that. All right. <laughs> so um, uh, that is something that we'll work on in the next release, and uh, we should be able to give you an alternate variable that um, would say something about paying balances online, which by the way, uh, you might, there are two things I'd like you to show before you leave. Go to the help guide and search for email body uh, because you there is a link in the help guide that does show all of those variables. Now you could go back to, there you go, and scroll down to the bottom and you're gonna see all of the email variables. And there may be some new ones, but this is where Matthew could look at adding a variable for online payments. Other thing, Matthew, show off the new um, uh, send email to student about going to um, the online system and paying. You've got a button that does that now in the new oh. uh, new release. Right. Um, I don't know who. Which I don't have. I, I have a check. Well, I don't know. Who, I, uh, I've got balance. one. Um, so email, let's see, that should just fire my paper cut. Yep, right here. So the email looks like this. Um, so yeah, this link to the account status.awp, uh, they can definitely click on that and, and log in. I don't have my ACE web running, so this isn't going to work at the moment, but, um, but yeah. By the we way, have, did we cover we that? that? Did we cover that Monday in the new goodies? Is yeah. that a conference release? We did. Okay, I was yep. answering questions and I missed that. So, uh, Sharon, what other things? I think that covers all this, the participant questions. Sharon, do you have any thoughts, comments about, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, Matthew? Otherwise, yeah, we're getting close to the time we need to give people, a break, give people a break because we're going to start in 30 minutes. Yep. That's right. Yes. That's yes. right. We do need to give people a break. And they can come back. If they have other questions, they can certainly ask them during this uh, open forum session. So we, we're going to let you go, and we want to see you back in a half hour, which is noon central time. And you can fire questions at these three and get the answers that you're needing. So I do need to give a shout-out, please, to uh, Loudoun County Public Schools. They are the winners of the Welcome Back Pizza Party. And so, Perla, we'll be getting in touch with you to see who we need to coordinate that with the, when the time is right. 
So with that, I'm going to let folks go so we can get fired up for the next session. Matthew, thank you so much for all the information. And we will see you all back in just a few minutes. Bye now. <laughs>